Hello class, this is Mr. Sutton. Today we are going to be doing skill 24, which is bivariate categorical data. Categorical data is data in the form of categories rather than numbers. Some categorical variables, for example, are gender, color, animals, vehicles, and yes or no responses. So to look at this, we'll be using a two-way frequency table uh, this is used to organize bivariate or two variable categorical data. So this is what your two-way table looks like. It's called a two-way table because we have categories this way and this way. And these are bivariate, uh, bivariate responses because we have two by two categories here this way and then two by this way. Okay. And then in the boxes, we will fill out what the data is. So we have overlap between these categories and these categories, but there is no overlap between these categories themselves, right? So let's look at an example here. So at camp, 45 campers each choose one sport activity and one art activity. So 13 campers chose soccer and painting, uh, nine campers chose baseball and painting, 20 campers chose baseball and sculpting. So we're missing the information that is soccer and sculpting, but considering we know that there's 45 campers, we should be able to deduce that once we start filling out our table. So first we need to construct a two-way table that summarizes this data i am going to put the sports activities here and the art activities here so i'm going to go ahead and do that now all right so notice i have it set up so that a sport like soccer can overlap with an art soccer can overlap with painting soccer can overlap with sculpting baseball can overlap with painting baseball can overlap with sculpt sculpting but the sports cannot overlap with themselves there is no box that represents someone who is in soccer and baseball, okay? So the sports cannot overlap and the arts cannot overlap. We have one sport we can choose and one art we can choose. So now we can start filling out the data we know. We know 13 chose soccer and painting, nine chose baseball and painting, and 20 chose baseball and sculpting. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill that out. So again, the only thing we don't know is how many chose soccer and sculpting. And we can figure that out by recognizing that there are 45 campers total. Uh, if you add these three numbers together, you get 42. So that means there's three I'm counting for. So they must have chosen soccer and sculpting. So I'm going to put that information there. Uh, the next thing I could do is fill out the totals for these. So I'm going to do that in the margins here. So to get the totals, 13 plus 3 is 16, 9 plus 20 is 29, 13 plus 9 is 22, 3 plus 20 is 23, and then this right here is the total total, 22 plus 23 is 45, or 16 plus 29 is 45. You should get this number either way. If you're not getting the same result, then you must have made a mistake somewhere, all right? So... There's different kinds of information we can get from two-way tables. Joint frequency, each number represented by the intersection of a row and column of the categorical data. What are the joint frequencies in the table above? So where the rows intersects the columns. So like this is a joint frequency, this is a joint frequency, this and this. Okay, so I'm gonna write those numbers down here in this blank. Those are my joint frequencies. Next are the marginal frequencies. It's each total for the categorical variables in a two-way table. What are the marginal frequencies in the table above? So that would be these numbers here, okay? So those are the marginal frequencies right there. Again, those are the totals. 
that we're given. Next, we have relative frequency. That is the ratio of the value within the frequency table to the value of the total. Relative frequencies can be written as decimals or percentages or ratios. Uh, what is a relative frequency that a camper chooses baseball and painting? So we just have to look at our table, baseball and painting. The intersection is right here at nine. And that is relative to all of the campers, which is 45. So the ratio would be nine over 45. So here I have all the different ways you can write that nine over 45. You can simplify that ratio to one over five, which is the same as the decimal 0 0.2. And as a percent, that is 20%. All right. So now I would like to turn to the U try here. Here we have a table already filled out. Uh, first thing, we need to list the joint frequencies, then list the marginal frequencies, then find the relative frequency that a student likes um, snowmobiles and likes skateboards, and then finally find the relative frequency that a student does not like snowmobiles and does not like skateboards. All right, so go ahead and try all of the parts of this uh, you try, and I will give the answer in a moment. Go ahead and pause the video and try all of these parts right now. All right, well, here are my answers for this. Again, the joint frequencies, that's all the intersections. We have 80, 25, 45, 10. Let's forget those answers. The marginal frequencies are the totals. So 125, 35, 105 and 55. That's why I got those answers. Here it says find the relative frequency that a student likes snowmobiles and likes skateboards. So that value is given to us right here. Intersection of likes snowmobiles and likes skateboards. 80. And that's out of the total, which is 160. 80 over 160 can be simplified to one half, which is 0 0.5 as a decimal and 50% as a percentage. And then relative frequency that a student does not like snowmobiles and does not like skateboards. That number is given to us right here. Does not like snowmobiles, does not like skateboards. 10 over 160 can be simplified to 1 over 16, which is 0 0.0625 as a decimal. And that is 6.25 as a percentage. Okay. There is one last thing to go over in the notes, and that is conditional relative frequency. So conditional relative frequency compares a frequency count to the marginal total of the condition of interest. So we are either looking at row or column conditional relative frequency here. So what is the row? conditional relative frequency of campers choosing painting and soccer. So if we look back at the table we had before, so painting and soccer, that was 13, right? And then since we're talking about row conditional relative frequency, then Instead of saying out of 45, we want to say out of the total for this row, which is painting, so out of 22. So since it says row, we go over to the end of the row, which is 22 rows, go left and right, columns go up and down. All right, that's important to know. So it's going to be 13 over 22. So 13 over 22 is approximately 0.59 as a decimal and 59%. So really what this is, is out of everybody that chose painting, uh, how many chose soccer and painting? And that's 13 out of 22. Next, it says, what is the column conditional relative frequency of campers that chose painting and soccer? So again, looking at painting and soccer, which is 13, but this time we're looking out of the total for the column. So we're looking up and down here, that is out of 16. So 16 people chose soccer. Out of that 16, 13 of those chose painting and soccer. Okay. 
So this is going to be 13 out of 16. 13 out of 16 is approximately 0.81 as a decimal, and that is 81 percentage. So let's look at this last example here. Felipe surveyed students at his school about whether they play a musical instrument or play a sport. The results of the survey are given into a table. So they had to play or do not play a musical instrument. They had to play or do not play a sport. What is the column conditional relative frequency of students that do not play a musical instrument that also do not play a sport? So they don't play either. So that is going to be 27, right? They don't play a musical instrument. They don't play a sport. And since we're talking about the column conditional relative frequency, it's 27 out of this column. And the total for this column is 45, okay? So 27 over 45 is 0.6, and that is 60%. So that's going to be answer D. So out of all the people that do not play a musical instrument, 60% also do not play a sport. Would, how, would be how we would determine or interpret that data. Thank you for watching the video. If you have any questions about this lesson or about the IP, come to my office hours or Ms. Parsons' office hours. I hope you all are staying safe and having a good day.